if Jesus was God, how could he pray to God? Was uh, Jesus praying to himself? Um, you see, to understand Jesus as God on earth, praying to his Father in heaven, we need to realize that uh, the eternal Father and the eternal Son had an eternal relationship before Jesus took uh, upon himself the form of a man. So, let's see what the Bible says in uh, John 5, 19 to 27. It says, Then answers Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son of Man can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the Father do. For what things uh, soever uh, he doeth, this also doeth the Son likewise. Okay? For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that himself doeth, and he will show him greater works than this, you, that you may marvel. For as the Father raises up the dead and the quickened them, even so the Son quickened whom he will. For the Father judges no man, and has committed uh, all judgment unto the Son, that all men, look at this verse, that all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father which has sent him. Are you seeing this one? Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that has sent me has everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they, shall he uh, and they that hear shall live. For as the Father has life in himself, understand this, so has he given this, uh, to the Son to have life in himself, and has given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Hmm. Okay. Now Jesus did not become the son of God when he was uh, when he was born in Bethlehem. He has always been the son of God from eternity past. Still is the son of God and always will be. Now, something in the book of Isaiah reminds us that the son was given and the child was born. Jesus was always part of the triunity, okay? Remember? Remember in the book of Isaiah? A son would be given. Isaiah um, 9, 6. Um, 9, verse 6. Look at this. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called a wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. So there was a child who would be given. Okay? Jesus was always part of the triunity along with the Holy Spirit. The triunity always existed. The Father God, okay, the Son God, and the Spirit God. Not three gods but one God, existing as three persons. So Jesus taught that he and his Father are one. Remember what he said in John 10.30? John 10.30. Remember what Jesus said? I and my Father are what? Are one. Depicting this. Okay? Meaning that he and his father are of the same substance and the same essence. The father, the son, and the spirit are three co-equal persons, persons existing as God. These three had and continue to have an eternal relationship. So when Jesus, the eternal son of God, took upon himself uh, sinless humanity... He also took on the form of a servant, okay? The form of a servant. Giving up his heavenly glory, as the Bible tells us in Philippians 2, 5 to 11, that he gave his heavenly glory as the God-man. 
He had to learn obedience, okay? Remember Hebrews 5, 8, go and read there, to his father, as he was tempted by Satan. Remember this? Accused falsely by men, rejected by his people, and eventually crucified. Okay? Now, his praying to his heavenly father was to ask for power. He needed power and wisdom. So that his praying showed dependence upon his father in his humanly uh, in his humanity to carry out the father's plan of redemption okay this is evidence in Christ's high, high priestly prayer in John 17 remember that his praying demonstrated that he ultimately submitted to his father's will which was to go to the cross and pay the penalty of death for a breaking of God's law okay so his praying was for something look at Matthew uh, Matthew 26, 31. Then said Jesus unto them, All ye shall be offered because of me this night. Eh, shall be offended, sorry. All, uh, uh, all, uh, all ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered. Okay? But after, but after I'm risen, I will go before you into Galilee. Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended, I will not be offended unto, uh, by you. And all those kind of things. Now, remember this. Remember this. Jesus already said that all this has to happen. So that what could happen? So that the Father's will would be done. That Jesus would pay the penalty of death for us breaking God's law. Okay, so his praying to his heavenly father was to ask for power, that his father can give him power. John, John 11, uh, 11 verse uh, 41, see this, he was asking for power. Then they took away the stone from the place where he, uh, uh, the dead was laid, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me and i knew that you hear my me always but because of the people which stand by i said it that they may believe that you have sent me you see jesus is praying was that god can empower him and also he can set an example of how prayer is important for every believer are you seeing the point and also we can see Mark 1.35. Mark 1.35. See what it says. And in the morning rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place. And there he prayed. Hmm. Why is Jesus praying? And then always, whenever he's going to pray, he's always calling some people with him so that they can see him praying, so that he can set an example of how prayer is important. And Simon and they that were with him followed after him. Are you seeing this? So he was always, whenever he's going to pray, he carries some people to show him the power of prayer and how prayer is important. Are you seeing this? So, of course... Of course, we have to understand that uh, we have to understand one thing that he rose bodily, bo bodily from uh, the grave, winning forgiveness and eternal life for those who repent of sin and believe in him as the Savior. So there's no problem with God the Son praying or taking to uh, talking to God the Father as uh, mentioned. They already had. An eternal relationship before Christ became uh, a man. This relationship is, is depicted in the Gospels. So we can see how the Son of God in his humanity carried out his Father's will. And in doing so, purchased the redemption for his children. He purchased redemption for his children. Remember John 6.38 what the Bible says? 
John 6, 38. See what it says. For I came down from heaven, not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. What was that will? To pay for the sins of the world. And Jesus had to be obedient. Obedient and to show. Because he, he, he released his uh, heavenly nature at, at some point and became a man. So that he could save you. Yes, he was still God. It's like uh, when an ambassador is sent to another country. What happens? He's partly of the new country and is partly of the old country. That's exactly how Jesus is like. You cannot uh, come up from uh, one country and you go and be an ambassador of another country and then it's like you've lost all the rights of your former country. No. That's why you see people, they have dual passports. That's exactly who Jesus was. He had a dual passport of earth now and also of heaven. Alright? So Christ's continual submission to his heavenly father was emp was empowered and kept focused through his prayer life okay through his prayer life so his example is ours to follow okay jesus was no less god on earth when he was praying to his father in heaven he was de depicting how even in sinless humanity it is necessary to have a vital prayer life in order to do his father's will jesus praying to the father was a demonstration of his relationship with the trinity and an example for us that we may rely on god through prayer us we may rely on god through prayer for the strength and the wisdom that we all need. Since Christ as the God man needed to have a vibrant prayer life, we should also be a follower of Christ today. We should always pray and ask God for wisdom and power and knowledge in what we don't understand. Do you pray to God? Are you following the example of Christ? He gave you this as an example. He walked with his disciples every day so that he can show them how Following Christ and walking in Christ should be a life of prayer, a life of faith, a life of obedience, a life of this and that, a life of selflessness. That's why he had to lay his life. And he tells us to love others as he loved us, that we can even lay our lives for our friends, that we can do everything, that we should overcome temptations, that uh, we should believe in God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that we should always pray. Jesus was not doing all this because... He was inferior. No. He wanted to show us an example of how following Christ is like. And that's why Paul told us, follow me for I also follow Christ. Paul knew how to suffer. Uh, how suffering is like. How prayer life is like. And all these kind of things. And now he has to trust in God. And he said, let's follow Christ's example. Are you following the example of Christ of praying? Are you even a believer in the first place? Because unless first you become a believer, all that you do is in vain. How can you become a believer? Through the gospel. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It is all about believing how Christ died for your sins. He was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. When you believe what he did and why he did that, and you understand and you confess it to God through a prayer, you tell him, Jesus, this is what I've understood today. That you died for my sins. You were buried and rose again. And the third day according to the scriptures. Now God, please make me a new creation. Make me new. I believe in you and I believe in the atonement that you sent for me. Thank you. Thank you for becoming my propitiation. For substituting me with you here. And you saved me. Thank you Lord. When you confess that and you tell God what you've believed, then you're saved, my friends. And all you need to do is talk to him in prayer. Talk to him every day in prayer. And remember that he did all these things so that he can show you an example of what love is. Hope this has been a blessing to you. Please, you can share the video, and also you can subscribe to watch more videos every day. And also hit uh, the notification button so that you don't miss any. You can also be notified every day as we post. Thank you and God bless you.